Hello and welcome to this first video in a series on carbon-based compounds, sometimes called organic chemistry. And we're going to start with the simplest carbon-based compounds, the alkanes. Hello and welcome to this first in a series of videos on carbon-based compounds. This branch of chemistry is sometimes called organic chemistry. We're going to start with the simplest hydrocarbons, the alkanes. So this is what you should know already. You should know how to name simple two element compounds. That's the thing where you change the, the name of the second element to end in IDE. So for example, the compound formed between copper and oxygen is copper oxide. The compound formed between sodium and chlorine is sodium chloride, that sort of thing. Don't get too attached to that because we're going to find it's not at all useful when we're talking about carbon-based compounds. You should also know that carbon is in group 4 of the periodic table. Now on some periodic tables these days that's called group 14, but as I'm old-fashioned I'm going to stick to group 4. This means that there are four electrons in the outer energy level of a carbon atom. Hydrogen though has only one electron altogether. Okay, so let's see what happens if you put carbon and hydrogen together. Okay, so here's the outer energy level of a carbon atom, four electrons. I'm not going to bother with the first energy level, which is inside that, because it's not going to play any part in the chemistry of carbon. So all I've shown here is the nucleus and the four outer electrons. Okay, this means that the valency of carbon will be four, what you sometimes call the combining power is four. Hydrogen, they're just one electron all together. The first energy level is the outer energy level, so there we have one outer electron, and the valency will be one. Okay, now you may have been taught how to write uh, the formula for a compound based on valences, but I'll just remind you. There we've got carbon, valency four. Hydrogen, valency 1. First of all, we see if these numbers can be cancelled down into anything simpler. With 4 and 1, you can't, so we're just going to have to leave these as they are. Then once you've got that sorted, you cross them over like that. We don't bother writing 1s, so our formula is CH4. Let's see where that comes from. We're going to put the hydrogen together with the carbon. Imagine your hydrogen atom has bumped into your carbon atom. And now you've got a shared pair of electrons between those two nucleuses. Now that shared pair of electrons makes up what's called a covalent bond. And that covalent bond is going to hold those two atoms together. A shared pair of electrons is going to attract both nucleuses and it's going to hold those atoms together. Now notice for the hydrogen you can't add anything else onto that hydrogen atom. Its outer energy level, the first, is now full. The same can't be said of the carbon. The carbon still has three unpaired electrons. So let's imagine this is running around a whole bunch of other hydrogen atoms and they can bump into it as well. There we go, like that, like that, bumps into another hydrogen atom and bumps into another one. Now when it gets to there, you can't add anything else to that carbon atom. It has a full outer energy level of eight electrons. You can't add any more electrons, you can't take any away. So that is a complete molecule. All atoms with a full outer energy level. And it shows up like this in a structural formula. Each line there represents a shared pair of electrons. Each line represents a covalent bond. Now you might imagine from what we said earlier that this would be called carbon hydride. Uh-uh. Instead we're going to call this methane. Now why should that be? Why do we need a completely different name for this thing? Well the thing is there are thousands and thousands and thousands of compounds containing just carbon and hydrogen. 
These are compounds we call hydrocarbons. Okay, see this crowd. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Right, let's imagine all these people in here are called Bob. All these people in here, though, are called Bob. And all these people are called Bob. In fact, let's imagine everyone in the crowd is called Bob. And then over the tannoy there comes an announcement. Would Bob make his way to the front? It's going to be carnage, isn't it? The whole point of having names is to be able to distinguish one thing from another. Now there are thousands and thousands of compounds made of hydrogen and carbon. We can't call them all carbon hydride. So what we do, we have a different naming system and we'll see how that's worked out. Okay, we're going to deal with the alkanes. Okay, now there is methane. We saw that just a moment ago. Now, let's suppose that we take that hydrogen off and slip in another carbon and two hydrogens, like that. Now, that's a perfectly valid molecule. That will work. Both carbon atoms have full outer energy levels with eight electrons. All six hydrogens have two electrons. So that is a completely valid molecule. It's going to work. But it's not methane anymore. We're going to call that ethane. But I could do that again. Move the hydrogen, slip in another carbon and two hydrogens. Again, this is a perfectly valid molecule. It all works. All three carbons have full outer energy levels. All three carbon atoms are forming four bonds. It's all happy. But again, this is not ethane. We're going to call this propane. Just one more. Let's move that carbon, slip in another carbon and two hydrogens. Again, all four carbons now have four bonds. All hydrogens have one bond each. It's all happy. This molecule is called butane. OK, let's move on now to what's called general formula. There is methane. We saw that earlier. Carbon and four hydrogens. Each line represents a shared pair of electrons, a covalent bond. OK. Let's now do what we did before. Add in our carbons and two hydrogens each time until we get bored. And then we put the hydrogen on the end. OK. Now let's see how that's made up. In the middle here, you've got a whole bunch of carbon and two hydrogens, or CH2s, if you like. Okay, So, that bit in the middle, we could give a kind of general formula of CnH2n. For every carbon in the middle section, there are two hydrogens. So however many carbons you've got, there are twice as many hydrogens. So n could be any number. Whatever number n is, 2n is twice that number. But we haven't accounted yet for these hydrogens on each end. So we're going to have to take account of those as well by adding in a couple of hydrogens. That then is our general formula for alkanes. However many carbon atoms there are in a molecule of an alkane, there will be twice as many hydrogens plus 2. We're going to look at a couple of examples in a moment. But let's look at how we name them as well. OK, what you need for these is what's called a table of prefixes. And here they are. For each number of carbons in a molecule, there is a special prefix, which goes at the beginning of the name. Let's see how that works. First off, for the alkanes, all the names end in ane. A-N-E. OK, let's take, take the alkane with five carbons. Now, we saw earlier that the general formula for alkanes is CnH2n plus 2. So if n here is 5, 2n is 10, plus 2 is 12. Double the number of carbons, add 2. Now, if you look at the table on the left, you'll see that the prefix for five carbons is pent. So this will be pentane. 
Similarly, we saw this earlier, for three carbons, again, the general formula tells us to double that and add two. Two threes are six, plus two is eight. Now, the table tells us the prefix for three carbons is prop. So this is propane. Finally, working backwards, if we know we've got 18 hydrogen atoms this time, we take two off and half it to get the number of carbons. 18 take away 2 is 16, half 16 is 8, so this is C8H18, and the prefix there is oct, so this is octane. Now, you're going to have to learn those prefixes, right? There's no real way around that. You might want to come up with a nice mnemonic. Mrs. Edwards' polar bears pinch her hard on naughty days. You might want to learn that, but it's, it doesn't work particularly well because you've got two P's in there and you've got two H's. So in many ways, the best way is just to sit down and learn them. OK, so what should you now know? You should now know that there are thousands and thousands of compounds made only of carbon and hydrogen. We call these compounds hydrocarbons. Now, the alkanes are a group of hydrocarbons. There are many others, but this is one group of hydrocarbons. You should know the general formula now of alkanes, Cn, H2n plus 2. You should know how to use it. So if you're given the number of carbons, you should be able to work out the number of hydrogens and vice versa. And you should now know how to name the first 10 alkanes. Well, thanks for watching. That's all for now. Bye now.